Good morning. Welcome to GSC Live Mornings. It's August 1st, day 141 in our stay safe time together. Uh, grace and peace to you um, from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Just felt like that needed to be said this morning. Members and friends of Good Shepherd, um, friends of mine, welcome. Um, it's always great to have you join me for my morning devotions. I slept in a little bit this morning, uh, but I've been up for a while kind of pondering what it might be that I would share with you this morning that's on my mind. Um, well, I had a thought, so I went to my cupboard and I found this wonderful cup that we got at Monticello out east when we visited the home of Thomas Jefferson. And I've shown this cup once before, um, but uh, this cup commemorates or comes from the Thomas Jefferson Center for Historic Plants. Thomas Jefferson was quite a, um, an agronomist or a horticulturist. Uh, he loved farming, he loved plants, he loved the cultivation of plants. And uh, um, as I picked this cup up this morning, I, I got to thinking about the pleasure that comes from uh, digging in the soil with your hands or with a shovel, uh, cultivating plants, pruning, trimming your plants, watering plants. Uh, it's a gentle, kind um, thing to do. It's something that you can spend time with and contemplate lots of different things in your life while you do these things. Um, my wife Cindy was out doing that yesterday, and I just observed this peacefulness. Um, and she was out doing that, uh, being one with the plants. Have you ever talked to your plants? Uh, we do. <laughs> um, I don't know if it helps them or not, but it helps us, makes us feel good. Well, anyway, it also brought to mind this time um, in my past, um, personal experiences of being on the farm for the first 22 years of my life. And how back then, uh, there was a practice called putting land into what we called the soil bank. Uh, it also meant putting land into fallow. Um, in other words, we wouldn't, we wouldn't till and pressure this land to produce a crop this year. We would let the land rest. And um, in our part of the country, we would often plant that land. Yes, we'd go buy seed and plant a crop that we would not harvest. It's usually red clover and white clover, sweet clover, a mixture of clovers, which are legumes. And uh, those plants would grow prolifically and their, so their roots were creating these little things called rhizomes down in the soil. And, and they were actually improving and building up the soil. And uh, we would leave these fields in fallow for one, sometimes two years to give them a rest. And when we would plow that, that soil under, those plants under after one or two years and go back to production, oh my, the soil responded by supporting those new crops in, in amazing ways. Today, we never give those fields a rest or rarely, it's a rare program uh, that would encourage farmers to let their field lay fallow instead of raising an intense crop, intensely applying chemicals and fertilizers and water and whatnot to make those crops produce. Do you see a parallel with our lives? This pandemic has forced our lives into a fallow state. It's caused us to stop producing. Goodness, our domestic gross product uh, reduced by a third uh, annualized um, over this previous quarter. Mm, that's a sign of going into fallow. Uh, let's not see that as a disastrous thing. Let's not see this, even though it feels disastrous, to be put on hold, our lives put on hold, or we can't do all the things that we've become so busy doing 
many, many things for the good, but some things just because we felt we needed to be busy. Putting our lives on fallow. I want to read to you from Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. Just one verse. Sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap steadfast love. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord, that he may come and rain righteousness upon you. We're in fallow. Fallow time. Our lives have been put into fallow. This is a time for us to rest, to build up. We can look at it this way, okay? Uh, we can look at this as a time to rest, to put our lives uh, on hold so that they may be uh, re-strengthened. Uh, perhaps a spiritual renewal of some type. Uh, moving away from the old trends of production only. Intensely trying to produce something. Intensely trying to keep busy. Intensely trying to do this or that. One of the laments over the past 20 years in the church has been people are too busy. Well, this pandemic changed all that. I, I hope we're careful that when we do overcome this virus, that uh, we don't become all of a sudden too busy once again, that we forget our Lord, and that we forget to remember what Jesus is all about and what God really intends for us. I want to read this little quote from Otis Moss the Third, a great preacher in this country. He writes, it is the truth that to be a person of faith in America today is to recognize that American desires Jesus slogans over morally grounded Jesus inspired action. I'm going to read that again. It is the truth that to be a person of faith in America today is to recognize that America desires Jesus' slogans over morally grounded Jesus-inspired actions. Those quirky Jesus slogans that we come up with, uh, they fit well with a, with a too busy life. Morally grounded Jesus-inspired actions require some depth, some depth to the soil of life, a richness of soil and life that requires us perhaps to put our lives into fallow for a while. That we can sit with the Lord quietly to regroup, to strengthen, and to uh, come back um, better than ever. Let us pray. O oh God, today let us rise with a renewed commitment to do justice and love kindness. Let our spirits be mindful of those in need and our voices responsive to the injustice in our midst. Help us to continue to stand for something larger than ourselves. That our lives being put in fallow may someday be turned over, be brought out of fallow, this fellow state, richer and more loving than ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great day, folks. And always remember, God loves you.